city of diversity and future and American way, all the everything you want in a comic book city. Uh, we get like uh, all these establishing shots of like a, you know, of a uh, bay with all these like uh, cranes that are all like you know ready to service these ships. That's all kind of sleepy, and we get like a neon lit downtown. And then maybe like looming in the distance, we have a <clears throat> uh, portion of the city that looks much more run down. And uh, there's all sorts of like uh, police, uh, you know, like sawhorse, like in a police barricades put up and such. Uh, like do not cross tape is fluttering in the wind. There's all these billboards up uh, advertising like the future uh, housing district. It, it's like this metropolis looking like buildings is proposing. Um, and uh, I think maybe we get like a couple of cops that are having like a conversation. They're like kind of just yucking it up. Like, uh, uh, you think any of them bums is going to come uh, try to make trouble for us again tonight? I don't know. You know, it says the other one as he picks up a jelly donut and tosses it in his mouth. <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden, they uh, get a call on the radio, and it's an emergency uh, call for uh, their car, uh, all cars in the area for a high speed chase. And uh, they respond immediately, like they throw on the siren, and they uh, start, you know, hauling, you know, just butt, you know, just trying to catch up. Mm -hmm. And we get this uh, shot where it jumps to uh, them coming into a street there's maybe two or three cop cars chasing this van uh through this uh like slum area it's all this like old defunct uh you know like steel works and mills and just industrial wasteland that uh this van is driving through and there's a bunch of guys inside with ski masks on uh in disproportionately sized uh firepower like uh, the guy hanging out the huh. back has like a what looks kind of like a gravity gun or, oh. or a portal gun or something. He's firing like these big energy blasts out the back. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah. There's a uh, we get a shot of the guy driving, and he's uh got like a ray gun in his belt, and he's looking in the palm of his hand, and he's got a miniaturized ATM. And it looks just like a normal ATM, only it's tiny. And uh, it looks like it's just been ripped out of a wall somewhere. And, uh, you know, there's little tiny, even little tiny little paper bills that are fluttering around inside the cab. And he's just kind of smiling like, yeah, score. And uh, this is when our first hero kind of shows up. So who's um, pursuing this van and how? Uh, which of our heroes gets established in this moment? Seeing how this is a bank thing, I'd say uh, Tarantella is pursuing by using his detective skills to map out the area uh, where the <clears throat> uh, or, or where it's going. He's going to find like an overpass somewhere to kind of drop down and uh, right on the van. Okay, so he's like, oh, so you're not chasing me. You're ready to intercept. Yes. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, cool. So what is this? Like, it's an overpass you're waiting on, or maybe like a girder that's hanging precariously over the street? Like, Considering like, the construction, I'd probably say a girder. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. There's one of these big uh, building construction cranes with like this lone girder just kind of hanging out over the uh, street. And uh, describe yeah, what the like what the panel looks like as you're kind of just waiting there. So I, I'm in my Tarantella outfit. I have my communicator up, talking with uh, with William, saying, "Okay, uh, uh, you're right, old man. They're coming this way." And he's probably trying to, like, "Well, of course I'm damn right. I, uh, don't." He's like, "I may be old, but even I know the iPod is blocked up there in this time of day." Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I, well, let's hop right into this conversation while you're waiting. Like, well, you sure you can handle this one on your own? You've got the new communicators now. You can just call in for backup. It doesn't just have to be you. <sighs> I mean, I'm, 
they have the power now to actually do something. I, at least I'll start it, and if the case comes down to uh, meeting help, I, like you said, I still have the communicator, but they need to be dealt with now. Uh, uh, if I can, uh, Miss Detroit, uh, is this something that she can interject into since she's got a communicator, I presume? Yeah, is it an open channel or not? Yeah, I'd say it's open channel. Uh, she'll wait for them to, to finish uh, discussing and uh, just chime in, gosh, Tarantellas, don't fight. You know, I'm I'm on my way, but I got to take the bus. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so are you literally on like a city bus, or is this like a euphemism for like some underground like superhero no, transport? <laughs> no, it, it's it's probably not literally a bus. It's probably just like a you know an old van or something that uh, she picked up fairly recently. Oh, you know what it could be? It could be like one of those uh, city trolleys. And you're powering oh. it with your powers. Yeah, there you go. It's a, it's a uh, it's an old trolley bus. Oh, that's cool. I like that. So yeah, like sparks are just flying out. Like <laughs> the old like uh, uh, like hanging rails that even used to like powered are just gone, and yeah. it just sparks are flying off of nothing now. It is ding 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 ding, <laughs> and I guess we get like a shot of like a couple walking across, and like the arms swinging down, and they're like, what? There aren't any trolleys anymore, and then... <laughs> cool. Alright, um... So, uh, I think the van is coming into sight. Uh, so... The elder, uh, T Tarantello, uh... Breaks off communication, saying, Alright, just don't go and do anything stupid like get yourself too hurt. Remember, you gotta be in a good enough shape at the end of the night to star all over the next day and signs off so uh what's the plan are you just going to like jump off when it starts getting up to where it's going to be underneath you uh, uh was that directed at me or, or yes yes uh, yeah uh-huh she'll uh we'll just try and uh and slow it down a little bit and then duck and roll okay um, and then, um and then I would be, since I'm from the girder, would uh, would, would move um, move beside and then use, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I move, I move beside and just kind of tie my jump so I land directly on top of it. Okay. okay. Let me think here. Um, so you've got the detective skills. Let me see here. Let me think if there's any moves uh, for this. Uh, I'm, say I'm getting my books pulled up and everything. Uh, basic moves. No, I think this sounds sounds just fine. So, uh, so yeah, so Tarantella uh, leaps off of uh, the building, and like you're wanting to like what lands on the front of the van or on top of it? Uh, on top of it. Okay. Okay. And is the uh, trolley intercepting it or like coming up alongside it? Uh, I would say probably coming at it at, at a right more intercept. Okay. Um. So, uh, what what's the timing on this? Does like uh Tarantella land on the hood and then you uh? park in front of the speeding van or do you stop the van and then he lands on it? Uh, I'd say he probably lands on it and then uh, she tries to get in front of it and stop. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, Tarantella, you land on top um, and you hear uh, confused voices inside the uh, vehicle. And uh, before uh, Miss uh, uh, <clears throat> let's see here until we can have the uh, bus, uh, quote unquote, show up, I think they start taking some shots at you uh, from inside the van. So these holes start ripping through the top of the car as these big, like, plasma balls shoot straight up at you. Okay. So I want you to... Um, let's see here. Take a powerful to see if he dodges. Yeah, that sounds uh, appropriate. So, roll for take a powerful blow. 
Okay. That's just a flat 2d6, right? Yes. It would be modified by uh, your conditions, but you do not have any right now. Woo-hoo. Okay. So, a six. Yeah, it's a miss. So, choose one. Uh, you lash out verbally, provoking a teammate. Oh, no, no. Uh, um, to a foolhardy action. Uh, sorry. Um, uh, the. the, the um... To take up off a blow, it's that's the only one that's inverted. If if he rolls uh, less than seven, that means um, it doesn't hit him. Oh yes, you're correct. It's, it's seven to nine. Yeah, you're correct. You want to roll low on that. Yeah, thank you for correcting me. Yeah. Um. So yeah, does it? What does it look like as you dodge? Are you just kind of like uh, flipping around the top of the van? Um, I would dodge. I'd actually say because of my power negation. Even though, uh, like, the energy from these blasts, like, occasionally, I kind of, like, I, I dodge most of them. And then when one would ever hit me, I kind of just uh, kind of swipe away using my hand and just nullify one of the blasts when it comes near me. Okay. okay. All right, perfect. All right, so um, you're dodging the shots, and the ones that even get close enough to graze you just get siphoned off by your powers. Um... Then, all of a sudden, this uh, city trolley just grinds to a halt in the middle of the street, and uh, the van slams on brakes, and, like, turns and, like, topples over on its side and, like, just grinds to a stop in front of it. What do you guys do? Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. going to jump off the top of the uh, trolley and uh, kind of brush your hands across the traction motor real quick just to gather up an extra bit of uh, of energy and then uh, now that her arms are all nice and glowing level it at the van and uh, cool. pull out a card from her pocket with the other arm and make sure she remembers the Miranda rights <laughs> because uh, <laughs> darn it the Supreme Court matters <laughs> it's laminated <laughs> Yeah, it's it's it, truth and truth and television. When they first introduced the Miranda right, cops were issued cards. Look it up. So I'm I'm presuming this is a uh, theft and theft. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you, you they, they, probably uh, would have gotten the download from uh, the cops because uh, they don't mind giving you a little bit of information when you're working with them. Uh, Because the cop cars are squealing to a a stop a a healthy distance away to let you guys deal with this. Uh, You you know that this was a small-time crime, a petty theft, uh, sort of, not petty theft. Uh, These guys have uh, been hitting all the ATMs on the fringe areas around this, uh, like all like the uh, gas stations, like the 7-Elevens, like the late-night shops. They've hit three establishments, and they're just tearing the ATMs out of the wall and shrinking them and taking it with them. Really fucking smart. Yeah. Anyway, so should give them the rundown. You know, you have the right to remain silent, refuse to answer questions. Anything you say can and, be, can and may be used against you in the court of law. Consult an attorney before speaking to the police and have an attorney present during questioning now or in the future. You cannot provide an attorney. One will be provided for you before any questioning. If you decide to answer questions without an attorney present, you still you still have the right to stop questioning at any time and talk talk to an attorney. Uh, knowing and understanding these rights is if I explain them to you, are you willing to answer my questions without an attorney present? Um, I think that's when a boot kicks open the back door and a guy limps out. It's the guy with the uh, plasma cannon. And he hefts it up and it looks like he's about to uh, start taking pot shots at you. I think this is a good time for one of our unseen heroes to like pop in. So uh, who who joins in at this point? I, I, I'll, I'll do I, it. Yeah. All right. So like I'll I'll be like, like um, still dusting myself off from where I fell. So let him come in first. <laughs> well, I mean, I could have been like behind, kind of like off in the distance watching for a while. I'm mm-hmm. all. Cause like I'm all about like just trying to stay uh, unseen. 
I'm trying to move in slowly so whenever I see all this going down that I think I take this as my sign to go in and offer my assistance okay um so how, how do you make your entrance I, I I show up and I uh, I run out and I'm just like this we can we can you know, we do this peace peacefully no no I'm like like stumbling around like this because I'm not I'm not very like I'm still new to this I'm not very good uh hero thing and I just you know I, I never really finished the sentence but I'm kind of just trying to get my point across. Okay, and I'm I'm still learning voices here. Is this uh, Arrowhead or is this Lupine? Lupine. Okay. Uh, so how do you make your entrance? Do you like leap in or? Yeah, yeah, I like leap in. Jump. Okay, so uh, you you try and talk them down then. Yeah. All right. Um, why don't you give me a uh? see here I know there's niche powers. to talk them down media provoke what's that uh, if he's trying to talk them down maybe that could be a provoke yeah yeah give me a provoke oh, um uh, yeah, and it's uh, plus superior for NPCs. Uh, for in yeah, it's a uh, uh, roll plus uh, superior. I got it. Right. Okay, cool. So, Basic. yep, uh, you uh, they can instead choose um, ten plus. So I think he overreacts, and uh, you gain an influence over this guy as he uh, hits a switch on that uh, plasma cannon, and it starts pulsing green, and he uh, chucks it at the uh, police caravan. Uh, it says, oh yeah, well, deal with that. <laughs> and he starts he running. Starts running. Yeah, he's Taren, just, he's just, he looks like he's just trying to distract you. Tarantella would look at this and see it going over to uh, police van. He's going to roll Savior to, to pretty much just get in front of the uh, the blast and try to absorb it. And since, okay. he's going, yeah. since he's going to, uh, to try to nullify the, the blast, I'm going to, I'm going to use my mobility to like rush the other guy down. Okay. Uh, so you're going to try and get, uh, Go grab the other guy. So, um, this guy's a mook, so I don't think you really need to roll for that. That's what you do. Um, but let's see. Um, how about unleash your powers to see if you can absorb this much energy, uh, Tortella? Okay. I'll, I'll re roll using Freak. Oh, yeah. Nope. But I, so I'll just take a blow. Uh, yeah, market yeah, condition, condition, GM will GM tell, you, will which tell you which one. So what so. condition do I want to give you? Um, so uh, why don't you take insecure? You really thought you could soak that much, but uh, you couldn't. So yeah, uh, this thing blinks for a bit and then detonates. And I'd say like a good like a uh, chunk of the uh, city block is torn up, and asphalt cracks, and you try to contain it, but it uh, keeps going outwards and outwards and closer to like uh, civilians and like really doing some public damage. Um, is when, there any way uh, Miss Detroit could try and soak up some of this energy, or is it too different uh, from what she's used to dealing with? No, you can try to do the same thing. You could also roll this. So roll uh, 2d6 plus your freak, uh, which I think there should be a button for that on your character sheet. Yeah, there's a button. Okay, yeah. Uh, 
the room. And I, as I pin the guy to the ground, you know, just reading him his rights again, you know, you have the right right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Blah, blah. You know, I'm just doing that over again. So, uh, doesn't seem to have worked. Just stop. Doesn't work. No I'm pushing the button and it's not doing it. Two B ten. Yeah, it should be 2D6. Oh, I'm sorry. Whoops. If you're in your labels, you just push... There's a button. There's a frick. Yeah, there's there, there's a button, and I, I pushed it, and it brings up the uh, the input value. Oh, yeah, you uh, just click OK. Uh, yeah, I did. I, I, hit, I hit submit, and it doesn't do anything. No, okay. I don't, I don't um, know. If, I'm gonna, uh, actually, I'm going to try pushing another button, see if that... Not, is that you rolling the two d six? You you succeeded. You got a ten. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I'm, just, I'm trying to figure out why the buttons are. Oh, hey, uh, check to see if you had to put in the situational. I did. Yeah, I hit. I hit uh, submit. Oh, oh, we'll just we'll do it like this for now. Um. So yeah. Uh, Toratella, you uh feel a bit insecure as Miss uh, Detroit has to come in and basically save the day. And uh, when you finally open your eyes, I mean, you feel just completely, like, overcharged. Uh, and that, that was, like, pushing the bounds of your ability. But Miss Detroit looks just as good as ever. Like, <laughs> wasn't even a thing for her. Crackling and, with uh, Literally crackling with her. Yeah, as a matter of fact, she looks better. There's, like, a sparkling sheen. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I, I I did have to just hit a, put a plus zero in for some reason. Ah. Okay, dang. Never mind. Ignore that role. Okay. Um, so uh, the, the the cops cheer, and uh, they they close in. And there's a few more guys inside of the uh, cab, but uh, they're all pretty much too banged up to really do anything. Um, and true to comic book fashion, um, there's someone important here. I think there's like a detective. There's a detective, uh, Roy Mathers. Uh, who comes up and uh, extends a hand to uh, uh, Miss Detroit and says, Miss Detroit, you did it again. Man. Thanks, Detective. Uh, she'll just kind of chirply and uh, decline for a second until her energy dissipates before taking his hand and shaking it vigorously. But I couldn't have done it without everybody else's help. No, oh, that's nice of you to say. And uh, he kind of glances over the van where they're pulling people out. And uh, a, a guy gets pulled out that looks very different from everyone else. He looks to be like he's in his late sixties. Um, he is roughly three feet tall, and he was the driver. And he had he was like up on like blocks and stuff. Well, um, gosh, something you don't see every day. Um, you're from the Silver Age, right? Uh huh. Uh, I think you would probably recognize this guy as an up and coming villain from your day. Uh, this looks an awful lot like a much older, much down on his luck Marcus Minimum, who is a shrink ray based uh, gimmick villain. He would like steal whole buildings at a time. Oh my stars! That's Doctor Minimum. He stole the entire Detroit Free Press Free Press Building in '63. What's he doing hijacking ATMs? I don't know, but uh smells like he tied one off. And sure enough, he banged up his head something bad. But uh, if we pull anything up out of him after we let him uh, go to the hospital for a bit, we'll make sure and let you know, Miss Detroit. Well, thanks, guys. It certainly is awful strange to see a big-time villain like that hanging out with a bunch of street things. Yeah, all these old uh, parts seem to be just coming out of nowhere. And then he kind of, like, glances at you and says, oh, uh, no offense. <laughs> yeah, she just kind of, uh, she doesn't, she just kind of waves her hand, but, uh, her, her smile kind of fluctuates a second. Yeah. Uh, that everybody else her age is either dead or has. Right. And he's like, yeah, first it was, uh, um, you know who, and then after that it was, uh, uh, Wrecking Ball and 
Then it was Red Scare, and now this uh, character. What'd you call him? Uh, Marcus Minimum, I believe, was his name, but uh, he preferred to go by Doctor Minimum. Don't I don't know what institution awarded him a PhD, but uh, <laughs> I guess somebody. Well, it certainly seems like more than a coincidence. And he shakes his head. And he goes, "Well, I we got to go drag this guy in." Uh, it's a bit late for the press works, but I'm sure they'll show up at some point. If you want to miss them, you want to go ahead and head out now. Well, I'll have to consult my uh, companions and see what they want to do. There might be more trouble afoot tonight. And, and I on. think, yeah, like we get like the shot here transitions from uh, you guys like look up and there's a shot of like a cop like helicopter or like a news helicopter flying overhead videotape was following the chase. And it cuts over to the only person that wasn't involved, <laughs> our uh, uh, Arrowhead, yeah. who's at home freaking out that he missed the. Uh, oh, I was action. at home over here. <laughs> so, uh, why couldn't you make it? I was at work. Uh, you were at work? <laughs> yeah, yeah Just... you're in the break room. Like, everyone's yeah. like, ah, oh, crazy, right? <laughs> like, yeah, it looks like there's going to be more salvage for uh, us. Yeah. It, <laughs> got like a taco, just got like a Taco Bell bag on the break table. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're like looking down at like the uh, communicator. And it's on vibrate. Just totally missed all the calls, and it's yeah. like you miss seven calls from Torrentella. <laughs> like as I'm reading it, the taco in my hand just crumbles as I clench my fist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, God damn it. Huh. Um, and that's when uh, the night shift supervisor, uh, your mother's boyfriend, comes yeah. in and says, Oh, geez, uh, another one of these. Uh, yeah, a lot of the people on shift chuckle. He's like, Man, uh, it'd be almost sad if it didn't keep us in work. Uh, how long do you think it'll be in processing this time uh, before we get our hands on it? And he kind of like shares a joke with some of the other people and then spies you on the other side of the room and comes over and says, Hey, how's it going, champ? I say, uh, Hey, Dick. <laughs> uh, he has a seat and says, Ah, tacos, huh? You know, I used to love eating tacos when I was your age. They, uh, they don't really agree with me much anymore. I say, I say uh, there's one left if you want him. <laughs> <laughs> he laughs uh, clearly not getting the uh, <laughs> insinuation there he's like oh no I think I'm a... yeah. Um, yeah. but I gotta say your mother is just ah she's so jazzed that uh, you finally found uh, you know something to really keep you, keep you out of trouble I see, uh, my, my mom is scared about a lot of things well it's a scary town See, I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll be like, <laughs> scary because of who? Those those jokers? Look at them. They 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 went down in like two seconds. Well, I mean, fair enough. But uh, you know, it's still, I can understand why your mother would be worried. I mean, our outfit, and I think we need like a name for this organization, like this disposal. Um. Let's see here. Empowerment. Uh, demolition and disposal. EDD. Yeah. Ever since EDD started up, it, the yeah. streets have really been getting safer because look at all this stuff. All of these uh, old kooks and whatnot. You know, until we came around, all that stuff would just kind of linger on the streets, kind of get traded around until it finally wound up in some thug's pocket. Like these guys. Yeah, they're no real villains, but they can still just as easily hurt somebody. I'll say, uh, well, you have a point there. Uh, at least the buck stops with us, right? That's right. Well, uh... -huh. uh yeah, you keep I'll, your nose clean, kid, and I gotta go get back to work. Yeah, and I, I'll be just lying to TV, and it's like, um, so uh, that, those guns are gonna be coming here, right? 
Uh, most likely, as soon as they, uh, the police clear it, uh, they're going to be in lockup for a bit. I see. Well, uh, cool, cool. You know, uh, all in order and do their duty. All right. So uh, I think we kind of come away from that scene. And what, where did people land on wanting to, like, leave uh, the scene of the uh, car chase? Did you guys want to, like, keep poking around or, like, head off and meet up someplace else later? Uh, Miss Detroit's probably skipped on over to join everybody else to kind of uh, put out her theory that you know, there there might be more happening to uh, and ask Tarantella if there's anything else popping up on uh, Tarantella 1's radar. Uh, I'm sorry, I, could, I couldn't hear you. kind of cut out for a minute. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I leaned away from the mic. Uh, she's probably going to ask the uh, the group if, if they think there's a chance there's more crime afoot tonight, and then ask Tarantella specifically, uh, does Tarantella 1 see anything going on out there? Um, he, okay, Tarantello, kind of shaking off that, uh, that, that energy, he's like, give me a moment. Uh, he opens up his communicator after shaking off and chimes in to, uh, to William and asks, uh, hey, uh, he, he's like, he's like, hey, old man, is it, uh, it, uh, is there any, uh, uh any more perps uh, uh, out tonight? Excuse me. Sorry. One more moment. Again. And uh, there's a bit of grumbling, and you hear a click clack of like really old, like mechanical keyboard uh, going off. Uh, he's like, "I'm not seeing anything on uh, police bandwidths. No unusual signals. Mm, seismic readings are stable. No, looks like that was it for the night." Well, then I guess we probably should get head get headed back home tomorrow tonight. I've got class in the morning. All right, is anyone opposed to that? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I, 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 at some point, I'm gonna like probably call them to find out, find out what the hell happened. <laughs> Yeah, so you guys are all, like, deciding to, like, you're going to split up, and then everyone's phone ring, communicator rings at the same time. Uh Uh-oh. Okay, and? And it's Arrowhead. (laughs) (laughs) So, like, when you guys answer, I'll probably have been already talking. It's like, um, you know, uh, it's like, damn it, I was at work. I missed the whole thing. What the hell, man? What, what happened? Did any of you guys get hurt? Did you need me to save the day? Because, you know, I could rush um, out there. I, I think I think we're okay. Uh, are you okay, Tarantella? Lupin? Oh my god, are they dead? I'm on my way. <laughs> my way. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I think they're just a, a little bit a little bit worn out from all that hopping around and swinging on eye beams. It's like no, we he, <clears throat> he was a uh, terrible, no, we solved the problem. Uh, there was just uh, one of them got a little too cocky with their energy attacks, but otherwise we're good. No, oh. well, where did they come from? I mean, are there going to be more of them? Uh, we're unsure about where they came from, and it sadly looks like, well, actually, I'd say, for the civilians of uh, of the city, it seems that that was all for tonight. Yeah, and I'll be like, oh, I'll man, be like, this town is getting so boring. I was hoping for some action tonight. Well, we did try and call you. Uh, well, uh, it, uh, I was uh, doing, you know, uh, important stuff. Uh, you know, they... The top secret project really wanted me on this. Oh yeah, you know I know you guys take a lot of the junk we uh, we capture off the streets. That's a real good job. Oh yeah, you know I'm saving the city one 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 thingy at a time. You know it's a lot better than what we used to do, which was just kind of dump it in the salt mines under the city. <laughs> <laughs> And yet you wonder why it still ends up in your face again. 
Say, are we going? Well, are we going on patrol tonight? Yeah. Yeah, I think like the uh, patrol portion of the evening is kind of wrapped up. I think you guys will probably, unless you want to like meet up at the uh, base or something. I think it's just going to kind of roll over to the next day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If anything, uh, Tarantella would say, uh, "You guys go home. I'm gonna uh, head back to the base and train up a little." Okay. I guess we'll probably see you tomorrow. Okay, cool. Um, you know, I'll. I'll... Leave word that if, if the thing rings, I'll, I'll come running. And see you guys around. Don't forget to call me. Hmm. Yeah, we'll make sure to, to send you a message. Oh, Maybe right. we should get some kind of searchlight. <laughs> yes, yeah, searchlight. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Mr. Troy just keeps coming up with great ideas that are like 50 years <laughs> Guys, I've got a new idea. I call it the pager. <laughs> it's, it's, it's an idea for a portable phone. I can charge a telephone and carry it with me. <laughs> I just have to have Bell Labs hook a telephone cable up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. So, uh... I guess we get a shot at everyone, like, returning to whatever it is they do for the evening. Uh, finishing up their job, getting ready for school. Um, yeah. Uh, does anybody want to do anything this night, or do we just roll the next day? Salvatore just... Salvatore, because he's feeling a little bit insecure about, you know, not shoring up his powers, trains a little bit tonight, and then afterwards just retires back to his apartment and goes the next day. <laughs> Okay. You're in trouble, police. <laughs> yeah. Uh, t -t 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 Second. Okay, something real quick. Okay. Um. So, uh, the following day. Uh. So, would it be safe to say that you all miraculously go to the same school? Uh, probably wouldn't be outlandish. Not really. I mean, uh, oh, we're in Halcyon City, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, if we're active superheroes, it's, I think they even say it's not really mandatory, but they have, like, just overarching academy that where all the superheroes will go to. To where it's like, it's, it's the cream of the crop anyway, where if you're active, you're, you're there. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not necessary, but like a lot of times it's um a lot of times. I actually uh, was reading a really cool plot hook idea that was uh investigating a failed attempt at that. That someday I'll probably try and do something with that. But yeah. it was kind of a cool idea. Yeah. yeah. But it's not it's not like mandatory. Um, yeah, it's not mandatory. Uh, uh, really depends how older is everybody. Yeah, what what yeah, what, 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 what are the ages? Uh, before the time jump, uh, I, I guess Mr. Troy's probably the oldest. She's, uh, was a college freshman. Oh, okay. But, you know, now everything she knew is wrong. <laughs> we may have to repeat her senior year of high school. <laughs> I'm guessing I'm... I would probably be about 17, 18. I probably would have been, like, just finished high school okay yeah so uh not everyone necessarily is in high school okay um uh, yeah and i had my backstory is like he was on an accelerated path so he's already at least second year college all right all right hey they can all go to community college together <laughs> Well, we can all yeah perfectly service together. <laughs> yeah the dean can walk in in a crazy outfit it'll be great yeah, we could all be in the same Spanish class. It'd be wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I think like uh, we get like the shot of like the following day is uh, in the uh, bar above the uh, you know panel, and I guess you guys are all uh, sitting around. We're doing whatever it is that you guys are individually doing, and uh, we're getting a shot of uh, someone watching a screen, and it's talking about a. Uh, uh, riots, uh, not riots, I'm sorry, <laughs> jumping ahead of myself a little bit, 
uh, that there is a scheduled uh, march against this planned, uh, you know, rezoning of the old, you know, uh, industrial zone area. Yeah. And uh, there's like there's a lot of like you know coverage about it, and they're showing like police chopper like footage from last night. And they're like showing crime statistics that have skyrocketed, and uh, you know, and it looks like it's people are planning for a pretty peaceful like thing. Like, there's no like bandanas out yet, just yet. It's all just like you know signs, like mm-hmm. you know. But it's definitely like a thing. I mean, like, there's an extra police presence uh, because of it. I'll just so, uh, having a party. <laughs> right. uh, Miss, Mr. Detroit just kind of looks kind of eyes glazed, like, uh, you know, distant sound of Huey's deal. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <Whoa>. Okay. <laughs> um, would it be fair to say that maybe you would be like in a library looking up stuff about whatever happened to Marcus Minimum? Yeah, probably. Uh, hitting, hitting the books and the uh, vertical files, local library. Yeah, yeah. Because Maybe you have the really microfiche sure how out. The, how the internet works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're sitting there, like, working the microfiche. Yep, just scrolling through uh, the last uh, 30 years of the Halcyon City Times. Right. And you're, like, uh, looking at all these, like, old police reports and, uh, you know, newspaper articles that show photos of them. And back in his day, he had sort of an impish look to him. Like, he had a small little cap on bowler cap and like you know poofy uh you know sleeveless vest and his little shrink ray and yeah like he would steal monuments or like you know floats out of a parade like you know he, he was a very campy silver age a uh, post golden age like early silver age sort of like villain comics code authority approved yes um <laughs> You know, and even back then, he had kind of wispy, graying hair. Um, and, like, you're kind of, like, looking like, um, Mr. Uh, Minimum's latest plot, uh, most daring escapade to date. And it shows him trying to uh, steal his uh, failed attempt to team up with a series of other villains to steal some massive monument in, like, the uh, bay of Halcyon City. Huh. Something like um, Statue of Liberty-esque. Like, some... Maybe it's, like, a big monument to, like, the first uh, hero of Halcyon City. Yeah. And this would have been, like, a, let's say this was, like, four, five years after your disappearance from the timeline. Okay. And it shows him uh, teaming up with uh, some other, like, known characters. Even, like, a new villain that you never got to face before you left the timeline. Uh, But they're all kind of teamed up. And you recognize uh, one of them is uh, Red Scare. Uh, One of the villains that has shown up as well since you guys all teamed up to face your future self. You don't know if uh, this previous connection means anything, but... Maybe. Red Scare did sure get around. Did believe in the sharing the means of production. Uh, she kind of just lamely chuckles to herself after making a poorly understood joke about Mark. Yeah, yeah, I, I got it. I think I get it in character and out of character. <laughs> well, he did, you know. If you, if you could say anything for him, he sure did believe in communism, which... You know, didn't turn out so great, but I don't think any of us thought it would. And keeps scrolling through. Is it one of those fancy microfiche machines where you can take a picture and print it out? Yeah, sure. Oh, golly. So she'll take a few snapshots of of the different articles documenting his escapades, and then... uh, Keep scrolling forward until he sort of starts to drop off the face of the earth. Like, uh, yeah, you're scrolling forward, and then uh, you're hit with one of these moments of oh no, as you see uh, a big bold uh, article about your future self. 
Oh no. And uh yeah. And it talks about um it details the bat the very public battle between the young Mrs. Uh, I'm sorry, Miss uh, Detroit versus the original Terratella. Oh no. Ah, that's gonna get a lot a full complete not not even a scan read. Just uh <laughs> lean into the scope and just read the whole thing. Yeah, um it doesn't really go into the specifics of uh why it happened, uh, but it shows the full on fight. <laughs> um it shows that Toratella had like some sort of specialty suit that he had designed specifically for facing her because his normal energy gauntlets would have been pretty useless against you. So it looks like he was prepared for the fight. Um, may, do you have like any sort of weaknesses or anything he could have exploited? Um, I don't know. Probably, um, you know, any kind of, any kind of grounding would probably. Yeah. I, I think he had it. like a rubberized suit on. Like some like super insulated outfit he was battling you with in. The and uh, refers to Tarantella as a gimp. Nation scandalized. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say that it uh, happened in a lab. Like it was like a uh, nebulous lab destroyed in shocking battle between uh, Toratella and Miss Detroit. Well, uh, just kind of mutters to herself. Not what I was looking for, but helpful all the same. She says really uncertainly that it is, in fact, helpful. Mm -hmm. And then clicks forward another couple. Uh, is a uh, black eye asleep? I'm hearing snoring. Oh, it's uh, not for me. It's not for me. Oh my god, it is snoring. <laughs> it's coming from Black Eyes. Um. <laughs> yeah, you have like a a cat near your mic or something. Uh, he's out. <laughs> no, I I think I heard him, but <laughs> yeah, he spoke a second ago. Yeah. One second, let me type. Maybe it's like his roommate or something. <laughs> and be like, oh uh, yeah, it's it's some sort of cat. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's just out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't think I was that boring. <laughs> I have never heard this happen before, ever. This is the very yeah, first time. Uh... <laughs> Just, just straight out uh, down, I guess. I, I've seen this happen once, but at least happened over like a break, not yeah. like in the middle of game. <laughs> no, I have seen, I have seen someone fall asleep in the middle of greeting people, but I mean that's like, that's understandable. <laughs> this is, this is new. I'm gonna oh jeez! <laughs> um, which character was Black Eye again? Um, Zero was Toratella. Whatever is Miss uh, Detroit. Yeah, he's quick. Uh, D spot is Arrowhead, and I guess Black Eye is Lupin. Then. So I am thinking maybe of muting 
Or do we just keep going with the uh, user <laughs> volume? It's, Let's it's see not, here. It's not super disturbing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll just keep going then. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, um, so, Miss Detroit, um, d would your friends recognize you out of costume? Um, well, how much, this is, uh, this is how long after she has disappeared from the timeline? Uh, no, I mean, like, you're, uh, oh, oh, okay, I got you, like, would they actually know her outside yes. of the time? Um, or outside of the timeline, outside of her costume? Uh, probably, um, if, if they're, you know, observant, uh, I don't, I don't know that, uh, the obliviousness of civilian hero is she's really not all that disguised existing costume. Gotcha. Okay. Anyway, so um I'm trying to think here. Uh I am going to uh use a GM move here. I'm going to give you a condition. Uh and I think that is going to be hopeless. Ah. Yeah, that makes sense. She's feeling pretty down after that news article. Right. And I think one of your hero uh, companions recognizes you in the library um, as you're exiting. Probably. Uh, so, uh, I was going to say, because she's the only person under 50 at a microfish machine. Yeah. <laughs> um, so who do you think it is, guys? Who uh, bumps into her? I think it's pretty unlikely that it would be me. The only okay. reason I would be there is if I had been like curious about what used to happen to weapons before. But um, I don't think, yeah, I don't think I'm the kind of person who would go to the library. So it might be um, Tarantella. Okay, Tarantella, would you be there at the library for some reason? Uh, yes. In fact, I was going to actually ask. Would Miss Detroit have asked him to uh, help uh, help research Miss um, uh, Doctor Minister uh, Doctor Minimum? Uh, yeah, he probably yeah, would have invited, invited him along. Okay, because he actually has a move that helps with that. Oh, wow. yeah. Well, I guess you know he's, 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 he is the information, information guy. guy. Okay. So, okay. Uh, what's, uh, the what's the move? Uh, been reading the files. Oh, that oh, sounds cool. Oh no. You've gonna... learned about the superhuman world went towards resources. When you first encounter an important superpower phenomenon, you call a uh, role plus uh, superior on a hit. Tell the team one important detail. All right, go ahead. Yeah, role plus superior. Oh, dang. Yeah, full hit. So it's kind of up to you how you want me, like what information I kind of get from that. Um, I would pre predominantly ask maybe a lot like, so we already kind of know his MO, but like maybe uh, a bit more about his known associates and uh, maybe more about exactly like the schematics and his thought pattern, like profile, uh, kind of getting like a profile of him on how he creates his weaponry. Okay, um, I'll give you base knowledge on him, and because you got hit, you get to have a follow up question after that. Um, so, yeah, what you know about Marcus Minimum is that. Uh, it, first of all, the shrink rate technology he created himself, um, which it's very unclear, like, um, all of his, like, uh, psych data points to him being unhinged because he clearly could have just become rich off of just that technology alone. No, he decided to pursue super villainy. Uh, you see that he's been known to be affiliated with a few different minor supervillain team-ups 
like teams like the uh, uh, Terrible 12 and a few other uh, brief appearances in other villain teams. Uh, but the big thing you discover is he was uh, reported as being dead in uh, the late 80s. Hmm. Uh, my follow-up question would then go to, as he was a reporter dead in the mid '80s, uh, information about that, like how, like how is he reported dead? Was it by like cop or was it by villain fight? Like, uh, uh, he, his body was um, identified post mortem from a car crash in a uh, some mountainous ravine not far outside of town. It looked like he was driving. It looked as if he had been enjoying a retired life, and his dental records showed like the crash Mercedes was driven by Marcus Minimum. Hmm. What year was this? Uh, I will say eighty-seven. Hmm. He said eighty-seven. That that that. But that was the year for a lot of people to just disappear and reinvent themselves. <laughs> so. I mean, every, I mean, people still think that Jimmy Hoffa just didn't get sunk. He's still just walking around with Elvis. And, uh, and uh, Solomon Rushdie tries to break out those dank literature references because, you know, <laughs> Lit 101 is the other thing she's been doing in the library. Okay. okay. But, yeah, Salvatore uh, would talk over to Mr. Uh, Mr. Troy. Well, what is Mr. Troy's name? Uh... Name civilian wise. Her, Her civilian, civilian name, name is, is Nell Case. Nell Case. So he, so Salvatore go over to Nell and say, "Well, I, uh, I did some research, and supposedly that uh, that man from well yours and the old man's past. Supposedly we're looking at a dead man. Uh, in eighty-seven, in eighty-seven, he was supposed to take. He took his hot Mercedes and drove into a mountain. Huh? Huh? Well, he certainly smelled pickled enough to be a preserved spe specimen, but was moving around, and, uh, well, sort of. So, you think he faked his death? Yeah. Th this reports from the eight, uh, from 87. With, w w during that age, a lot of villains and such stepped up their game, became a lot more deadly and dangerous. So people, both hero, civilian, and villain alike, would fake their deaths just to get out of the life. Huh. huh. 30, well, 40 years is a long time to stay hidden. Yeah. And, he, and even then, I, he's like, uh, and even then, he, and as he pulls up, uh, kind of pulls like a little dossier he made up, uh, here's a list of all his known associates. I mean, some of these are probably uh, around the old man's and your age, so, yeah. So if you, if you know the, any of these names and second they ring a bell, just chat over the communicator. Sure, sure. I'll take a look. And she will indeed uh, take a look through the list and see if she can pick out any familiar faces or eliminate any of them, as the case may be. As the late 60s for super villains. Okay. Um, so this is a list of like all known associates and whatnot. I would think so. If all the information with the information I. I would have got. Uh, I would have been uh, doing. I would have been combing over him for as much information as I could have got, which was like basic info plus like the no associates and that small little piece about his death. Okay. Okay. Um, so I think I'm gonna like kind of break away from you guys for a bit. Uh, what is Arrowhead up to? Um. So let's say, uh, assuming this will be like a, a Saturday or something where I have my day off. Mm, okay. Yo, I, I, was, I was wondering because, well, like, um, if we were the library and stuff. Mm. Mm. Do you want to be showing up at the library or do you want to be doing for right now? I think, um, I think I'll just go ahead and, uh, like, uh, be, pro it would probably be really, like, fitting if, if I, um, call them on the communicator and media communicators make a lot of noise in the library. Okay. Um, so let me think here. Oh, right. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. You, um, yeah. So 
yeah, that'll happen in a second. But let's fast rewind a little bit to before you call them on the communicator. I think what uh, I would like to do um, is I would probably look up the guy and see if my company has any any equipment from him. Okay, um, so I think that definitely is in like a uh, part, like all that, like the manifest of what stuff yeah. you guys have mm -hmm. is definitely like in a different part of the building you're not supposed to be able to get into. Mm -hmm. um, but luckily you have a belt that can phase through things, yeah. so <clears throat> yeah, there's not a lot they can do to like keep you out of places. Yeah. So I, yeah, I think you're definitely like poking your nose where it doesn't belong. In uh, yeah. yeah. So let me look here. It'll be something like I um something like I like that I do from time to time, just looking for new stuff, new things. Um, <clears throat> so like um, what I could probably do is uh assess the situation to see if I find any information on it. Yeah, go ahead. Roll assess the situation. Cool. So assess is superior. Submit nine. Okay, so before um, you pick your question to ask here, mm -hmm. I think um, you're in a, a big kind of strong box locked vault area, yeah. and like there's all these like just like rows after rows of like shelved items that have been categorized and are just waiting their uh, time to be properly disposed of and you're kind of clicking through a computer in a uh, control booth that's like over everything else yeah and uh you know maybe like you know like we have text panels explaining where you are exactly and what's going on yeah um and you're you glance over the railing uh while uh the list is loading and you recognize um your uh mother's uh boyfriend giving a tour uh to what looked like some executive types and more importantly you recognize uh one of the elderly women uh that are touring around with the group as an older version of your friend who you've also seen out of a uh, disguise before oh. so you see the adult out of costume version of a. Uh, Miss Detroit. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> okay, so now with that information, you can uh, pick what you want to ask me. Um, that is an amazing piece of information. Um, do I know that the future? Miss, in Miss Innocent is evil? What's that? Do I know that the future Miss Innocent is evil? Yes, you, you, you guys fought her before. All right, all right, good. So I'm Yeah, you've, you've seen a side-by-side -side comparison of the costume. All right, so the question is, what here is the biggest threat? Because I'm going to wonder, like, why is she here? She can't be stealing stuff from here. Stealing stuff is wrong. Well, I mean, except when I do, but... <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, your question to what is the biggest threat here would be the fact that she clearly is mind-controlling uh, your mother's boyfriend, uh, Dick. Uh, she's mind-controlling Richard. Uh, you notice there's, like, a blinking behind his ear, and she's holding a device in her hand. And he's, like, nodding and agreeing with everything she says. And I think, like, you can't really uh, hear it or anything, but we get, like, the speech uh -huh. bubble down there so, like, the audience can see. Where she's like, right. yes, and tell me more about where you're storing these uh, energy cells, you know. And she's, like, hungrily looking over the racks of super tech. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, that's Crap, what do I do? What do I do? How the hell do I uh, set up an EMP or something? Do I, uh, uh, I, I know, um, creative destruction. Is there like a kind of trip a fire alarm or something? Yeah, yeah, I think it's easy enough to trigger an alarm. Yeah, so like, um, I'll, I'll trip the fire alarm to, to like 
to just get them out of, of get them trying to get out of the area or like to get them to try and get everyone out of the area something like that okay um so an alarm goes off and flaring um and richard is just still all smiles and not really getting that anything's wrong because his mind is being tampered with uh but you see other workers running for doors which are closing and it's it's like you're getting sealed into a vault, which is exactly what's happening. Oh. And uh, yeah, you're hearing like power buzzing behind the walls, and you're not so sure. Like, I mean, phasing that should get you out, but this place is also supposed to be resilient against supers, so yeah. you don't know exactly. Do you want to also try to get out, or what do you do? I think I want to um, throw like a. Uh, smoke um smoke bomb arrow because I oh, smoke bomb arrow perfect yeah i want to get close to dick and take the thing off his ear so i'm gonna do a smoke bomb arrow so i can probably sneak up and, and grab it and so that she won't see me okay um so yeah smoke bomb arrow goes off mm -hmm. um she starts coughing um and, uh, yeah, you, you, you run up to Richard, and as soon as you get the thing off, his head shakes like, what, what's going on? You, you can't be in here. And he, like, grabs you by, like, the scuff of your jacket. And I'll say, can't you hear that? We need to get out of here. Of course I hear it. You're trying to th rob us. You already stole the bow. It's a fire I recognize alarm. that. It's not a death detection thing. <laughs> Smoke, see? Smoke, fire alarm. Us go now. <laughs> um, and no, he's fighting back. He's trying to keep you here for the authorities. Um, I'm going to try to provoke him to convince him that it's just a fire alarm that I came in. I'm going to try to convince him that I came in to, to find him. <clears throat> mm, okay. All right, so that is superior. I don't think I have any bonuses to add. So this is going to, oh my god, not work. <laughs> Um, so he reaches over to a shelf and pulls out a manacle and slaps it on your uh, wrist. And all of a sudden, it feels like it's uh, magnetically drawn to the ground. Oh, shoot. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and he backs away and like runs out the door calling for guns. And that's when the smoke starts to clear. And uh, yeah, uh, what was the uh, future version of her called? Um, Blaze of Glory is standing there, and she does not look happy. <laughs> and I, and like, I think um, this is a good time for you to have made that call back to the library. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm going to be like, um, like uh, calling now. <laughs> ring, ring. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm saying, there's no loud. ring like, of this. Ring, ring, he actually you... says ring. Yeah, like ring, ring. You uh, damn idiots. <laughs> uh, Tarantella would be uh, uh, well, Salvatore would be probably bullying a little more information looks into it and uh, looks down to his communicator and picks up and is like, uh, hello uh, Miss Detroit uh, Mr. is off because it's, uh, it's the library you're not supposed <laughs> to have those things on holy shit alright uh so I will try to, first of all, I'm going to try to phase out of the manacle. I don't know if that will work. Is that an unleash? So what are you trying to do? I'm trying to phase out of the manacle. Um, well, I guess you could pull out an arrow and try to... Um, yeah, if you want to roll to unleash your powers, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Also, make sure and record uh, XP for uh, that one miss. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> it's like, you only got some XP! Look at how much experience you're getting! <laughs> if I get my next move, I'm definitely taking um, the, the gadget one. <laughs> because I'm grabbing something from in here for all this. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um... So, let's see here. Yeah, I guess it like, interferes with the phasing or something. All right, um, so you grab an arrow, and you throw it at her, and she catches it, and the taser goes off, 
and she just absorbs the power. And her <laughs> eyes flicker, like Raiden style, and uh, she tosses the uh, energy right back at you. So, uh, roll to take a powerful blow. <laughs> Absolutely. This is wonderful. Holy crap. <laughs> Conditions. Okay, well, it's a flat, so... Yay, and I got another XP. Yep, um... So, I guess you're able to uh, dodge out of the way, dragging, creeping your, like, manacled limb yeah. along the ground. <laughs> yeah. Um... So what are what are uh, people doing to the sounds of battle coming from the characters? Uh, Mr. Troit's just kind of leaning over confusedly and staring at the communicator, and uh, and and just looks at uh, Tarantella and goes, "Is that is that Arrowhead?" Yeah, I'll be like running commentary. It's like, "Oh my god! Oh no! I'm stuck to the thing! I'm gonna try to get out of the thing! Oh no! I can't get out of the thing! Okay, I'm gonna throw an arrow now!" And like, she's eating the arrow! She's eating the arrow! She still looks cute though, but and oh god, she's throwing it back at me! <laughs> oh no! Uh, that sounds like me. Uh, she just sits worriedly. You do, do you think he's at work? Are you are you at work, Arrowhead? It's like, she just yeah, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm like, raises her voice to the huh? communicator. Yeah, I'm just like, uh, huh? Oh, oh, god damn it! You you guys answered. You guys take forever. Yeah, yeah, I'm at work, uh, and you're here. I well, well, not you. You're there, but you're here. Yeah, no, I got you. She just kind of cuts them off before they they get <laughs> caught up in trying to identify which her is her. <laughs> yeah. And she just she'll look over to Salvatore and be like, I, I think we need to get going. Yeah, and, it, and then he would also chime in to um, Nell and say, uh, as much as this might be an inconvenience, your older self is giving us issues again. Oh, dear. Oh. Well, uh, she does tend to do that. She's doing it right now. Would you guys have I tend to do that. <laughs> Uh, however you want to look at it. That's a perfectly acceptable way of looking at it, too. Either way, it's part of my duty to stop her. Okay. He's like, well, we're ready to go. <laughs> Whenever you, you are. Okay. So he uh, he kind of charges like, hey, and he says, hey, gets over to um, a William and, uh, and, and times is like, uh, Oh man! Yeah, what is it, kid? Uh, you know. Uh, and he says we uh we have a problem. Uh, yeah, you know our problem from the, uh our problem of the future past persuasion is hitting again. We uh, uh we need a way to get there quick. <laughs> That would explain the uh, alerts, yeah, alerts from, from the from EDD facility. I'm firing up the Toratella jet. Wow, golly, you've got a jet now? The old... He's a, and then he kind of chimes yeah, out. Yes, so I had quite the windfall in the 90s. <laughs> Gosh, I guess playing the stock market really does pay off. Well, you'll probably get there before us. I, I didn't bring my car. <laughs> it's on the way to pick you up. Oh, even better. Um. So, yeah. It, so, uh, you guys are potentially inbound shortly, but uh, we still have a very <laughs> frantic chase scene happening. <laughs> um, so, um, I think you've, like, uh, lost sight of her for now. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what is Arrowhead trying to do? Um, I've lost sight of her. That kind of completes things. Because how do I shoot at something I can't? Or uh, were you trying to get away from her, or were you trying to like keep her busy? Um, probably a combination of both. Uh, like the next thing I had in mind to do was if I could uh, see her, I would probably try to try to um send some cow trucks where she was standing. Okay. All right, sure. You can like throw some caltrips down. Um, she uh, 
So are you like trying to do this from like hiding or like are you just trying to like make an obstacle for her? Like Yeah, I'm trying to make an obstacle for her because I've gotten a little bit away but I still have this manacle holding me to the ground. So I can't really like hide and move around. <laughs> so I want her to be hampered as well. Hmm, let me think. Um I'm sorry, what? Would that be directly engaged? I didn't quite catch that. Say again? Would that be directly engaged a threat? No, that, I mean, throwing an obstacle in front of her, I don't think is directly engaging. Okay, yeah. Um, I think she's just kind of trying to, like, get around the shelf to come at you from another angle. All right, so, um, reshape my environment with the caltrops? Or what do you think? Uh, say again? Uh, on that, unleash your powers, one of the things is reshape your environment. That might work. Possibly. Sorry, I think I I might be... Let me get... Oh, one second. Oh, maybe defend myself. Uh, well, she hasn't attacked you again yet. Um... You like uh, she's not like coming directly at you right now. Yeah. She's got around one of the shelves, and you can hear her kind of going through some of these lock boxes. Okay, I'm gonna try to unlock the, mon the monocle again. I need to get through. Oh, sure. Um, what would be a roll for that? Um, what would be a roll for that? I guess roll. Overcome an obstacle. Unleash my powers. Yeah, let's go. Um, is overcome an obstacle a uh, roll? Uh, yeah, um, un unleash my powers is used for, among other things, overcoming an obstacle. Okay, yeah. So, so roll for that. In my senses, yeah. So let's see here. Unleashing my powers. Do I have a move for that? No, 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 no. Okay. So it's just flat. Oh, I get free. Kind of. Hmm. Okay. Sure, um, so you get the manacle off. Right. Um, and, uh... I think that's just enough time to realize that the shelf next to you is yeah. toppling over. Oh no! <laughs> what I, do you do? Can I get out of the way in time? You could yeah. technically just phase through it. Oh yeah, I can do that, can't I? <laughs> I like the idea that um, like I brace for impact and then I remember, oh crap, I can phase. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'll do that. Um, so yeah, you like hop through it and yeah. she's on the other side with her hands crackling with energy and then she sees you like go through it and she's like, oh, that's right. You have that neat belt. You know what? I think I need that to get out of here. I want to and... throw a net at her to kind of ground her. Okay. So it's like uh, one of those um, ar being a net gun, and there's an ar I'll have an arrow for that. Yeah, directly engage threat. Cool. Um, so I'm not on the fire, so I can't move, use my move. So I'll just be a standard danger. Holy Christ, oh my! I'm gonna get a new toy, aren't I? <clears throat> All right. So. see here. I'm trying to remember, what happens when you directly engage a threat and miss? I get <clears throat> on a hit trigger. You could give me a condition and um, the attack fails. Like, you get to make a hard move, so one of the things can be to give me a condition, or you can make her do something in return, or um, <clears throat> something in the environment creates a new danger, a new situation for me, or something. 
Um, yeah. Um, so I think you fire the arrow, mm -hmm. and part of it is that it explodes to unleash the net. Yeah, it does. And she amplifies the explosion, so it just kind of it just shreds the net before it can ever hit her. But uh, it's overcharged, and it sparks a fire. Oh, yeah. And uh, some of these shelvings start, like, catching on fire. <laughs> I go to switch, I go to pull the fire alarm, and I realize, oh, already done that. <laughs> yeah. Um, has, she, does, has she opened any of the boxes as yet? Um, you oh. can see she has, like, a traveler's bag with her, and it's definitely lumpy, like, she's already grabbed some stuff. Can I? I still want to try and stop this one because I don't want him getting out of here. That can I hit the bag with a like a an ice grenade arrow? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so you're not trying to hurt her. You're just trying to grab get the bag. Yeah. All right. Unleash your powers. Excellent. So let's. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, uh, what what happens? All right. So it it um the the arrow hits hits the bag and the, the head um explodes into like cryogenic nitrogen in that little cloud and it freezes the bag. <clears throat> and the the straps that she's holding the bag by those crack uh, and the bag falls to the floor. <clears throat> And everything. Um, yeah. yeah, she grimaces and like kind of backs away from it as you do it. Yeah. And then looks at you and curses. And uh, I think she spots something glowing on the ground and she like just steps on it. And it's like a battery and like power starts like snaking out of it and like coiling up at her. Yeah. And yeah, she's definitely like throwing energy your way. Oh, you should. <laughs> like big blasts that are like blowing holes and like. You know, walls and in uh, you know, shelving, you know, fire spreading like crazy. Ooh, well, this one I want to use my move. Um, when I'm under fire, uh, so suck it, domit domitan or domitian or domitian or something. When okay. you stand strong while dramatically under fire, roll plus savior instead of danger, which will give me a little bump. I have a higher savior to directly engage a threat. Cool. All right, so um, this will be a, like another um arrow. Let's say, let's say it's a net gun, but instead of like the the, the nylon rope, <clears throat> I'm I'm shooting her with one of the metal lines that I use to grapple and swing from buildings because I'm trying to ground her. So to make ah, her okay. short circuit, basically. Cool idea. Yeah. So situation bonus non submit eight. Okay. Um, well, if I don't hit, if I do not get a ten on a directly engage, um, you still get to do some stuff to me. Okay, on a seven to nine, I have to pick one. I yeah. will. It would be a little bit much to take the charge. Can I take a charge? Like the, the charge energy she has at the moment. Let's say that that grounds off. So she's out of charge mm. for just a short moment. Yeah, and we'll we'll say that's creating an opportunity for your ally. Because yeah. this seems like a good time yeah. for the uh, vault doors to open up and your uh, two friends to run in. Excellent. <laughs> and I'll say uh Oh, there you are. So, uh, Miss Detroit <laughs> and uh, Toratello arrive at the uh, vault doors, which are opening, and uh, just in enough time to see, like, a good portion of the place is on fire, there's craters everywhere, and somehow uh, Arrowhead has managed to ground uh, your arch nemesis here, uh, Flame of Glory, and... Uh, and has like opened up like a brief moment, uh, like a window, an opportunity for you guys to uh, press the attack. All right, we got a hitter now, and we still got her trapped. Me trapped. 
you trap. And she just points an arm at uh, older her, Blaze. <laughs> okay. So she'll, uh, she'll uh, head on in vault. Uh, not entirely sure what she's going to do, but figures she can probably restrain her and potentially drain off any remaining electric power she's got in her and maybe maybe trap her. Okay. Um, so yeah, that sounds like unleash power to me. Yeah, I think that's uh, valid. Um, and I believe you're at a minus two to the right that right now for hopeless. Yes, because she is she's definitely seeing that fight with the original Tarantella oh. in her head. Uh, she's going for this. So plus zero for some reason. Still didn't work. Zero. Oh no, it's not plus zero. Just put us a normal zero. Well, I tried that and it didn't work, but when I made it a plus zero. So. Oh, that's pretty weird. Mm-hmm. Nope. Yeah, nope. I'm not working anymore. Huh? Well, 2D minus 2. Weird. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. It worked once and then it. Not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. Um, let's see here. On a seventy-nine, uh, so you have to mark a condition. Uh, so I'm going to say afraid sounds appropriate. Yes, but uh, you still pull off what you're trying to do. Okay. So yeah, you you pull off the hit on her, and uh, I think she is also afraid. Uh, so uh, you have like come up behind her and like what bear hugged her and like you know just siphoning off any power that she's already picked up. Yeah, drawing. I think there's this big back and forth of like energy control happening, and uh, yeah, there's there's just ground effect lightning crackling around in the middle of this firestorm, yeah. a vault full of vol. A tile mad science invention. Yeah, yeah, and stuff is going off and it's looking back. Looking back. Um, um, Toratello, can I make a suggestion? I was going to say I was going to assess the situation and see what I can <laughs> use to kind of like uh, within this area while stuff's going off, there's any other tool in this area of like mad science that I could use against her. Well, I, I was, I was, I was make a suggestion, make a suggestion that, uh, that William uh, sent along something to help you. Okay. Um, and you, when you step into the room, we saw your silhouette and it looked the same, but now that we see you in a full frame, you're in the anti, uh, oh. suit, like the rubberized suit that was specifically made to fight her in Gosh, the gimp suit. Rough. Yeah. The rubberized gimp suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Call it the rubber tarantula or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that sounds like a toy brand. Good Jesus. Anyway. So, uh, if I'm now immune to her powers, I'm actually going to see if I can get uh, get up close and then try to shut down her power of my own. Uh, yeah, you can try to touch her again. Uh, would that be Freak? Uh, yeah, uh, let's, yeah see let's see it. Darn. Let's see. Oh, your own suit is blocking your notification. Mm, yeah, um, so you're, you're not being able, like, basically their power feedback is making it so you're having a hard time shutting her down, mm -hmm. but it, like, so basically everyone's kind of at a standstill right now. And, uh, I think what ends up happening is, uh, uh, let's see here. So Flaming Glory is, like, you know, obviously, like, She's like looking at um, either I try to get out of here right now or 
you know, I get caught. So she it seems like she's given up on whatever mission she was on. And uh, instead, she grabs on to the uh, grounding rail that is going all the way up to uh, uh, Arrowhead. And she takes in as much energy as she can. And she does something that you didn't even realize you could do, uh, uh, Miss Detroit. And Ah, she pulls, like, an energy thing where she, like, turns into energy runs up the metal wire and then leaps off of it to his phasing belt and uses it to teleport away. Oh shit. Uh, which will, will Do actually be, <laughs> will actually uh, be a, a vocalization by Miss Detroit who no one has ever heard swear. will just, uh, fall forward and go, <laughs> Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I think you're like belt, pops and fizzles like you could probably fix it later but it's yeah. busted for right now all right cool oh, jesus christ <laughs> that's half of me <laughs> um yeah we're getting like lots of like uh sirens are like lifting like they're like all the red lights are turning off the splink- sprinklers are going try to put out the fire and while she got away you still have that frozen bag yeah um <clears throat> do would any of the things I have done here considered be considered as pull off a ridiculous son? Um, I think rounding her was pretty ridiculous. That was pretty ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alright, so Crazy what, awesome. So what I will do is um that allows me to mark potential, clear a condition, or take influence. I will use it to mark potential. And that will give me five potential. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another one of my moves, which is no powers are not near enough training, which gives me a new gear. So we'll say that I grab something from the bag, and um, yep. and while we're running out of here, so I grab something and we all like leave, unless any of you guys want to do anything else. You cut off there at the end, uh, spot. Yeah, so I say like, um, well, my last thing is to grab something, and I'm going to like make a move to run out of there. What about you guys? Uh, well, Mister Troy's just going to kind of stare at the wall for a minute, where she just turned to electricity and vaporized through the wall. But uh, she's not going to freeze up too long because they they're going to need to get the hell out of. There. Yeah. All right, and uh, I think since we're in a, approaching a pretty good time to like call it for the night, yeah. I think like the last little uh, shot of the comic book is uh oh, let's have one final little scene. I think everyone's at the uh, at the uh, spiders like uh, web or whatever you call like the Toratella's uh, base. Ooh. And, and you, you, you fall out. Wolf spiders can, uh, actually can do similar things. I call it the trapdoor, like a trapdoor spider. Okay, the trapdoor. You're at the trapdoor. And uh, I think there's like a briefing table. You guys are all sitting around. And you're looking at what was in the bag. And uh, it's all marked as police evidence from over the years. Yeah. And it's all like tagged and everything. And it's all stuff that was pulled off of. Uh, older supervillains yeah and it's uh it has an insignia on it and uh let me think what's a good insignia they're all like rings like signet rings Ooh. and it's um hmm it is of a multi-headed dragon and uh there is a word like there's a, like a Latin word and like it's translated as uh uh <laughs> kraken. And uh we see all like the uh bags that have like the identifiers of who pulled off of. And there's one from last night that was uh pulled off of uh you know uh Marcus Minimum and all these other people recently timers from various other cases over the years 
And it's just like evidence is like pointing towards it all being somehow connected. Yeah. And I think that's where we'll end this uh, episode one. Yeah. That was excellent, actually. I love that. Like, Cool. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Um, I don't know if we'll do this again, but uh, yeah. if you guys want to keep hanging around at this little channel, I mean, we might do some other stuff later. We might get back to this. Yeah. Be every fun. every couple of weeks, I have some interest in running something one shotty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was it was fun. It was a good time. Good time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was a good time for me as well. I had a lot of fun. <laughs> and, and some of us got much needed rest. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty sure that's not a reflection on you, dude. Don't worry. He probably just had like long shifts or something. <laughs> so a lot of times, what happens is you have to choose between resting and recreation, and <laughs> sometimes you just don't get to make that choice yourself. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I, I hope everybody had a good time. Yeah. 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 I yeah, just checked. He's still snoring. <laughs> <laughs> is he? Let me unmute. Yeah, I unmuted him. <laughs> I am going to. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh well. This is so cool. <laughs> oh, the poor dude. All right. Well, I am gonna go and f myself some dinner. It was fun, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. See you later. See you later. See you later.
Mm-hmm. 